Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be exploring the idea of concepting in 3D. And while I'll be using 3D Cope for this, uh, some of its more specialized tools uh, might not be applicable in other sculpting softwares. Uh, but this is just a general overview of how to get your ideas into 3D faster. So a lot of it should be translatable into whatever you use. Uh, whether you've got a voxel based system or um, a dynamic triangulation sort of a thing, the general idea of essentially doodling in 3D lends itself quite well to concepts, but there are some specific tools uh, outside of the general day-to-day -day of sculpting functions that we can use uh, just to get your ideas down as quickly as possible. So the goal here isn't refinement or polish, it's just about laying down quick, hassle-free geometry in the same way you loosely sketch in 2D. It's also worth noting that a lot of 2D concept artists have adopted 3D in some fashion, just to speed up a few processes in, in, in terms of uh, perspective or general forms or lighting, which they then just paint over in whatever 2D software they're using. So we're going to be starting with primitives. These are likely going to be your foundation 90% of the time in whatever package you use, not just 3D code. The idea itself is simple. Uh, you just start with a shape that loosely resembles your end goal and tweak it from there. It doesn't need too much of an explanation or a tutorial, but I did just want to show off a bit of 3D code's booleans in its voxel-based sculpting mode. I know you can do these sorts of operations in other softwares, but you'll have to take my word for it when I say that 3D Code is the king of Boolean operations. Depending on what it is you're making, especially in regards to hard surface sculpting, you might only need primitives and these Boolean operations to get a quick idea out. So all I'm doing here is starting with a base shape, using a symmetrical symmetry to cut out of that shape uh, and then I'm doing the same for the holes in the chamber itself and lastly just adding a few pieces back into the center it's quick and it's clean uh, it's great for hard surface stuff but uh, next up we'll take a look at a more organic or freehand type of sketching in 3d next up is the sphere brush which admittedly isn't the tool that I use all that often but it is a tool that allows you to sketch freely in open space and also just pl plonk down spheres wherever you want, which theoretically makes it pretty good for knocking out a few ideas. My only issue with it is that you can't change the shape of the brush strokes, which is sort of understandable since it's called the sphere tool and not the freehand sketch in open space with whatever alpha you want tool. But I'm just saying that while this is theoretically a neat way to sketch in 3D, I found its actual usefulness in the concepting stage to be pretty limited. Um, if whatever I'm trying to concept could benefit from this blobby style of modeling then fair enough but short of balloon animals or bouncy castles I personally never used this tool uh, except for its ability to place spheres s somewhere but it is still worth mentioning because it is a freehand open space tool so you can knock out some ideas with it. Moving on to the carve tool, this has similar functionality to the sphere tool in that it allows you to sketch out in open space. The only caveat is that your starting point needs to be a piece of geometry, at least while you're using a brush stroke mode. If you were to open the brush panel or the E panel as it's often called and select one of the lasso strokes, then this tool acts a bit like the blob tool, which I'll talk more about in a bit. So. While you might need to start with a piece of existing geometry to use the freehand sketching modes, you don't have to be on the same layer, which is really cool. In, in the past, I've often dropped down some primitives as a base shape in one layer, and then I'd create layers for each different concept that I'd be drawing on top using this tool. I guess the easiest way to explain that is uh, it's like if you're doing different skins over the base of something, 
and uh, you may have seen me messing about a bit with the brush settings uh, earlier on. While you can use any alpha you want with the carve tool, uh, I really recommend keeping it as a square one. Some of the circle alphas work sort of okay, but square seems to be the best. Also make sure your spacing is turned off, this tool is crazy blocky by default, and if you're using spacing then it's even worse, yeah, and you'll find all that at the, uh, the bottom of the brush settings window. I do wish this tool would get a bit of an upgrade, to be honest. It's pretty good for concepting fairly industrial or heavy military style assets, but the results that you end up with are often just a little too primitive to be worth polishing up into a final. So f for banging out ideas, it's, it's, it's amazing. But if you're looking for something that will allow you to get an idea down and then refine it until, well, final, uh, I'm not yet convinced that this is the best tool to start with. One mode that I'm not sure I even used while I was making this is the on-plane switch, which exists up there in the top left-ish of the menus. This allows you to right-click on a point. Uh, I think it's a point in space, but it could just be a point on geometry. Uh, but then you have that point to be set as its own 2D canvas, so anywhere you draw will be restricted to that plane. This might not make much sense without visuals, but uh, there is a tool I use later. In the video that has this feature by default so hopefully it'll make more sense when we get to that point. So that is the carve tool which is one of my favorites for just experimenting with ideas but it's pretty limited in terms of style. Uh, if you were needing to create very sleek, thin and clean looking designs then this tool probably isn't the one for you but for a r rough and tough approach it's pretty nice uh, and of course you can always up the resolution if you want more detail. It won't change the uh, the behavior of the brush itself, uh, you know, it's still blocky by nature, um, but more resolution equals more detail. Uh, you are going to run into some problems uh, because more detail means that it's harder to smooth sh shapes out. But you know, pros and cons and all that. You should uh, you should try it out for sure. It's uh, it's 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 a nice little tool. There is uh, a video I've seen of someone else covering this same tool uh, and I will link that in the description. Uh, I think the guy does some nice stuff and he also th throws it off into uh, key shot and whatnot for rendering which a lot of people seem to be doing nowadays but I'm a games artist not like a concept artist or anything. I do the real-time 3D so for me all of that rendering malarkey is, uh, is not my bag. Next up is the constructor tool, which on first glance just seems like a bit of a gimmick. It's like uh, pixel painting, but in 3D space and with some extra blocks latched on. But in actuality, it has a fair amount of uses depending on what it is you're making. I found the smart placement feature of uh, corners and edges to sometimes be a bit iffy, but you can toggle this yourself if you want. Uh, you can also change the block sizes, which is pretty handy. All in all, it feels like a tool that only v v voxels can do justice, so you're not likely to see a system like this in any traditional sculpting application. And for use case scenarios, you're obviously limited to super hard surface stuff, but if you're just laying down the basics and then hop into more standard sculpting tools afterwards, I would say this tool set packs a neat l little punch compared to the time it would take you to build the same shapes with just primitives. So now we're going to take a look at the Rapid 2 brush in the Surface Sculpting mode. Uh, if you're not sure how to switch over from Voxel to Surface or vice versa, the toggle for it is found on the Vox Layers window. If you see a V, uh, you're in Voxels, hit that and it will turn into an S uh, for Surface mode and Superman. This tool is a bit different from the rest in this list. It's essentially just a regular sculpting brush, but it's the best sculpting brush to a point. It is only available in surface mode. If you wanted something like it in voxel mode then the clay or even the build tools will work just as well. But the reason I'm mentioning it here 
is for those scenarios where you skip right past voxel sculpting and you want to sort of just get into the nitty gritty. It works amazing at large forms and also for smaller details when you're ready to increase your resolution. It is just a regular sculpting brush, sure, but so many of my models were made with just this brush uh, for the most part. I mean, obviously you're going to make use of all other tools like the move, pose or pinches, uh, but I think most sculptors eventually find their favorite brush where 90% of the workload gets done. And for me, in surface mode at least, it is the Rapid 2 brush. It is worth noting that with any sculpting brush you can control its behavior. For the Rapid 2, I prefer to use the, uh, the depth and opacity pressure as opposed to the more traditional radius and depth, meaning that uh, my radius won't change when I increase my pen pressure. Only the depth or the strength of the brush does. This is, of course, a personal preference, uh, and I may switch it up from time to time, of course, but for blocking out larger forms, you'll almost certainly want your brush strokes to behave in the, uh, the depth and opacity mode. It is also worth noting, as you can see sort of on screen just there, um, in the surface mode sculpting, when you're pulling out these forms with uh, various tools, it is essentially just sort of stretching those triangles out. So um, in voxel mode, it will create extra geometry as it needs to because you're working in a, a voxel based system. Uh, surface mode has some tools that kind of emulate that, but for the most part, and especially with something like the Rapid 2 brush, you will occasionally need to resample your mesh. Um, so I think in, in a little bit, I start to add in some ears or something and you can see on the back of the ears where it basically just pulls the triangles out and so I have to resample my mesh to essentially it recreates the topology for it so that's one thing to keep in mind. Lastly, we're going to take a look at some honorable mentions. There are many more tools you could be using, of course, but this was just a rundown of the ones that I found to be most beneficial in terms of time versus result. So first up is the blob tool. This one's pretty sweet in that you can define a lasso area uh, and just create that shape immediately. It, it, it has three options for the type of result you'll get. It has a, a round border, a plain border, and a sharp border. Uh, and the strength of these borders are controlled by your brush's radius, as seen in th these examples. The left results have a low radius, the right results have a high one. On top of this, if you didn't want to freehand these shapes, you can use square or rectangle or even spline-like modes and just apply the result when you're happy with the shape. Next up is the 2D paint tool, which is not a tool I found much use for, to be fair, but it does allow you to sketch in open space. The only caveat is that you're restricted to one axis at a time. You can change its behavior so that it changes orientation based on pick point rather than having to right click all the time to set a new point, which is pretty sweet. But uh, I also wanted to quickly show you this tool because I mentioned earlier about the carve tool having uh, a switch for sculpting on a planar axis. So it's essentially, it's, it's like this, except with the carve tool, you can toggle that on and off. Finally, uh, the curves tool. This really should have been earlier in the video. It's a crazy powerful tool with a multitude of uses. You can use it to tile meshes along itself or even use it as a skeletal base for a character or creature. Um, obviously, if you're doing anything with any sort of pipe work, uh, this is the tool you would use. But it's so easy to construct and edit that I often use it as a starting point for characters, creatures, animals, or whatever. If you keep clicking in open space, you'll just continue the curve. But if you click and drag on a point, it allows you to create a new curve from that point. So this is how you would build up a skeletal system. Uh, if you want to move a point, you just use the middle mouse button. For scaling, you'd use the right click and drag. Uh, 
Uh, if you just right click without dragging, it will simply change the curve type from smooth to flat. So that about wraps it up. There's still an ocean's worth of ways to get things done, but I thought I'd show off some of the ones that I found to be most useful during my daily working day. Uh, it might be a while before I can get another video out. I'm working on a pretty large weapon series at the moment, but in between my job and trying to actually enjoy a bit of the English sunshine before it's gone, things are a little slow to say the least. Bear with me though. So in the meanwhile, uh, I'll try to fill the gaps with s s something. Probably more Unity stuff, but we'll see. Um, if there's anything you're itching to know about game art development, then by all means throw down a comment. I'm sure I can help out in some way. But either way, uh, I hope you found this useful. And as usual, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.